Hey guys, welcome back to the channel again. Many of you ask me the differences between the GPT label, the DOSIS label, MBR system and UEFI system and how to install Arduino following those schemes. So let's have a look at it. So before we get our hands dirty on the terminal, let's have a short overview about the various systems. So I'm not going to go too much in depth about this, but I just want to give you a short historical context and a few points before we go into the terminal. So let's have a look at the MBR system, which came out around 1980 and started in PC DOS 2.0 by IBM, is usually associated with a DOS this label. It can have maximum four primary partitions or three primary and one extended with logical volumes. Partitions are limited to two terabytes and the boot and partitioning data are stored in the master boot record. And it's a special boot sector located at the beginning of the drive. Now, the UFI system was developed in the late 90s by Intel as a new format partition table, part of what is today the Unified Extensible Firmware Interface, or UEFI. As of 2010, the GUID partition table, or GPT, forms a subset of the UFI specification. It stores a backup header and partition table at the end of the disk for recovery purposes, so it's a more solid system than MBR, and it offers virtually unlimited partitions depending on the iOS. In Windows, for example, maximum 128. So when we want to install Arch Linux on a UFI system, we need to use the GPT disk label. And it's recommended to do this as some UFI implementations do not support booting to the MBR while in the UEFI mode. So when we want to install Arch Linux on a UFI system with a GPT disk label, two partitions are mandatory. We need to have a EFI partition and also a root partition. A swap partition is optional. You can always create a swap file if you want during the installation. And the home partition is also optional. Now, dual booting with Windows, the EFI partition is already present because it was created by the Windows installation. But of course, the root partition is still mandatory. Now, if you want to install Arch Linux on an MBR system with a DOS disk label, the swap partition is recommended, especially if you have lower RAM. A root partition is, of course, mandatory, and the home partition is optional. We can also install Arch Linux on an MBR system with a GPT disk label, although it's not guaranteed that it can work. If you are installing, for example, on old hardware, you might better go with the MBR DOS disk label system, as the BIOS in those computers might not support GPT. There is an eventual small fix for this, which is documented in the Arch Wiki. I will not put it here in the tutorial because I couldn't test it out myself, but I'll put a link in the video description so that you can have a look at it. So if you want to install Arch Linux on an MBR system with the GPT disk label, if supported, and you want to install Grub as a bootloader, a bootable boot partition is mandatory. A root partition is of course also mandatory, a home partition is optional, and a swap partition is recommended if you have low RAM. And finally, let's look at some recommendations from the Arch Wiki, which are extremely important. So to dual boot with Windows, both 32-bit and 64-bit, using legacy BIOS or MBR system, then the MBR scheme is required. That means that DOS this label with one recommended swap partition and a mandatory root partition. To dual boot Windows 64-bit using UEFI mode instead of MBR BIOS, the GPT scheme is required. So again, we need to have a EFI partition, mandatory, and a mandatory root partition as well. If you are installing on older hardware, as I said before, especially on all laptops, consider using MBR because its BIOS might not support GPT. And as I said before, there is a fix for this, which is documented in the Arch Wiki, and I'll put a link to it in the video description. If you are partitioning a disk of two terabytes of larger, you have to use GPT as MBR is limited to two terabytes. And lastly, it is always recommended to use GPT for UEFI boot, as some UEFI implementations do not support booting to the MBR while in UEFI mode. So let's have a look at the terminals and see practically how these are done. So here I am on a virtual machine and I set up this machine to be a MBR system. And one way you can see this, it's also how this Arch Linux prompt comes up on the display. Note that is not the one saying UEFI, so you can be pretty sure this is an MBR system. So let's put up the system now, and I hit enter here. And let me go full screen. So some people ask me how to connect to SSH while I'm doing the tutorials. So I'm gonna show you this here right now because I want to connect to a bigger terminal where I can have bigger fonts and use my mouse to point out things. So the first thing what I do normally is type in pacman 
dash s y y y to synchronize once the servers and then i'm going to install open ssh and hit enter here and proceed with the installation and then i'm going to activate the system by typing in system ctl start sshd and hit enter and give a password to the root user so i'll type in passwd and choose my password and retype it again and now look for my ip here with ip space a and I see my IP here ending with 141. So I can now minimize this window here. And I go to my virtual terminal and type in SSH, then root at the IP we saw. So 192.168.122.141 and hit enter. And accept the fingerprints, enter the password. And now I'm logged in into my Arch ISO. Let me clean up the terminal and increase the font size so that we can see better. There you go. So of course, I'm not gonna go now through the whole tutorial on how to install Arch Linux. We are just going to look at the disk here. So the first thing I do is type in lsbk. And as you can see, I have in this machine a disk called VDA, which is 100 gigabytes. So we want to format this following the MBR system with the DOS disk label. And to do this, I'm going to use CFDisk, which is a little bit more graphical as a partitioning tool, and it's helpful to see this visually. So let's type in CFDisk, slash dev, slash VDA, and hit enter. So as you can see now, it asks us to select the disk label. So we are following, in this case, the MBR system DOS disk label. So we'll go to DOS here, and hit enter. And now we can partition our disk. So following the MBR system scheme, a swap partition is recommended and a root partition is mandatory. So let's begin with the swap partition. I will create a swap partition here. And the rule of thumb is if you have, for example, one gigabytes of RAM, you should create a two gigabytes swap partition. So the swap partition should be always double of the memory. So the new option here is already selected. So I just hit enter here. And partition size, I'll type in 2G for 2 gigabytes and hit enter. It's a primary partition, so here I hit enter. And as you can see, it's created now a partition, but it's a Linux type. So we need to define this as a Linux swap partition. So let's go to type here and hit enter. And the Linux swap is 82, so just move up here and hit enter. And now we created the Linux swap partition. Again, we are only partitioning here. We are not formatting the partitions. Then we move down to the free space and we create our root partition. So we just hit enter here and we can accept the defaults of 98 gigabytes by hitting enter. And yes, it's a primary partition. So we hit enter here and the partition is created. Now we need to write the changes to the disk. So we'll go to write and hit enter, confirm by typing in yes and hit enter and the partition table has been altered, and now we can exit the program by going to quit and hit enter. Now let's clean up the terminal and have a look again at LSBK. And we can see here we have VDA1, which is gonna be our swap partition of two gigabytes, and VDA2, which is gonna be our root partition. Now we could proceed also, of course, to format these partitions and with all installation, but the purpose of this video is just to make clear the different partitioning schemes following the different type of systems. Now let's move to the MBR system with the GPT disk label. So I'll exit the shell here and clean up the terminal and I'll go back to my virtual machine and I will clean up the terminal here and type in power off as I prepared already another machine for this. And let me start the machine up here. And again, we have the same boot menu, so we can be pretty sure we are on an MBR system. So I'll just hit enter here to enter the installation. And there you go, now we are logged in. So I'll do the same process as I did before to log into SSH, and I'll meet you back in a second on my terminal. So there you go, I'm logged in via SSH. Now let's type in again lsplk to have a look at our disk. So we have again a VDA disk of 100 gigabytes. And again, we are on an MBR system, but this time we are going to format this with the GPT disk label. So let's type in again, cfdisk slash dev slash VDA and hit enter. Now this time we are gonna choose GPT as a disk label. So I'll just hit enter here. Now following the GPT scheme, if I wanna install grub as a bootloader, it is mandatory to create a bootable boot partition. So we can select new here and hit enter and create our boot partition. I'm gonna make the boot partition around 100 megabytes. So I'll type in 100 and then a capital M and hit enter. So now we have to go to type and hit enter. And now we scroll up until we find BIOS boot. 
and this is what we need to select as a partition type. And then we just hit enter here. And as you can see here, the type is now BIOS boot. So we can proceed now by creating a swap partition, which is recommended if you have low memory, or we can create the mandatory root partition. So let me go down here to the free space and I'll hit enter to create a new partition. And let's say I want to create a swap partition again. So I'll type in again 2G and hit enter. Again, I'll go to type here and I'll select Linux swap and hit enter. And now I can create my root partition by going to the free space, hit new and accept the default here. And the partitioning is done. So now we need to go to write and hit enter and confirm by hitting yes and hit enter here. And now we can quit the program by hitting quit. Now clean up the terminal and type again lsblk. And as you can see, we have now our BIOS boot partition here of 100 megabytes. We have our swap partition, 2 gigabytes, and our root partition of around 98 gigabytes. So we could proceed now basically to format the partitions. In this case, we would need to make the swap and activate it on VDA2 and also format VDA3 as an ext4 file type, for example. We don't need to do anything with VDA1 because we define this as a BIOS boot partition and therefore it doesn't need to be formatted and doesn't have to have its own directory. Now let's move on to the third scheme, which is on a UFI system with a GPT label. So I'll meet you here back on the terminal in a second. So before I go to the terminal, I just wanted to show you here how the boot looks like for a UFI system. You can see already here it says UFI shell, that means your system is in UFI mode. So let me boot up now the machine here and I'll meet you back on my terminal. So again, I'm logged in in my terminal here. So let's type in lsblk. And again, we have our VDA disk of 100 gigabytes. So we are going to format this following the UFI scheme with a GPT label. So let's type in cfdisk slash dev slash VDA and hit enter. So we are going to select GPT as a disk label. So we hit enter here. Now on the UFI system with GPT label, a EFI partition is mandatory. So let's hit new here and create our EFI partition. And I'm gonna make EFI partition 200 megabytes. So I'll type in 200 megabytes. The EFI partition can be between 100 megabytes and 500 megabytes. And then hit enter. Now let's go to type and hit enter. And what we need to select here, because it's a UFI system, and remember before we selected BIOS boot, because it was an MBR system. Now, because this is a UFI system where we are installing now, we need to select EFI system and hit enter. There you go. Now we can proceed by creating the swap partition if we wanted to, but in this case I don't because I would rather create a swap file during the installation afterwards. So I'll move down to the empty space here and I'll just hit new to create my root partition. So I accept here the default and I just hit enter. And Linux file system is correct, so this is done. So I go to write here and hit enter. Confirm by typing yes and hit enter and quit in the program by hitting quit. Now let's clean up the terminal and type again lsblk. There you go. And we have VDA1, our EFI partition, and VDA2, our root partition. Now we would proceed by formatting VDA1 with the FAT file system type. And for that, we would type in mkfs dot fat dash f32 slash dev slash vda1 and hit enter and then we could also format vda2 by typing in mkfs dot ext4 slash dev slash vda2 and hit enter now the difference here is that we need to create a boot directory or a boot slash efi directory for vda1 so let me type in lsblk now, to mount these partitions, we need to create a boot directory for the EFI partition, which is not existing yet. And we can mount also VDA2 into our mount directory. So we would do it in this order. First, we need to mount the root partition. So we type in mount slash dev slash VDA2 slash mount our installation directory. Then we would create a boot directory in here. So we'll type in mkdir slash mount slash boot and hit enter. And now we can mount VDA1 which is our EFI partition again, into this boot directory we just created. So we'll type in mount slash dev slash VDA1 slash mount slash boot and hit enter. And if we type in again LSBLK, we'll see our mount points there. So this is a quick overview about the partitioning schemes. And if you have any questions about this, let me know in the comments below. 
So there you go, this is a quick overview on the partitioning schemes using the UFI system or the MBR system with the GPT label or DOSIS label. I hope you enjoyed the video guys and if you did please hit the like button below and subs to the channel if you haven't already, subs always really helps us out. And if you want to support the channel please visit our Patreon website or you can also donate through PayPal via the website as well. If you have any question about the video please let me know in the comments below and thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.